Good morning, Floss Tube. My name is Laura, and I'd like to welcome you to Stitching by the Shore, my channel all about cross stitch with a little bit of paper crafting thrown in too. If you are new, I'd like to say welcome. Thank you so much for pressing play, and I would love to know about more about you and what you like to stitch and all of that good fun stuff. Um, maybe where you're from, uh, maybe where you might have heard about me. If you did hear about me from somewhere, uh, I just I just love to know more about you. And then all, to all of my returning stitching friends, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. I so appreciate you taking the time to watch and to hang out with me and to interact and have us all just talk stitching. Most of you know I am a fairly solo stitcher in my little corner of Southern Delaware. And uh, so it just, it feels so nice to not feel so alone in this hobby. And I know many of you probably get that because uh, I know when we Zoomed this weekend for our special Zoom weekend, people had said that they don't have stitchy friends around them. So I get it. I get it. And I am so grateful for each and every one of you for making my life a little less lonely. So thank you. Huh, speaking of the Zoom weekend, I'll talk about that basically in life because <laughs> that was my weekend. But at the very beginning, I did want to send out three thank yous to three individuals who helped me host and put together this weekend. I want to thank Karen from The Stitching Owl, Amy from Renewing Stitches, and Sandy from Stitching with Sandy. Thank you so much for uh, helping me. Uh, those three hosted some of the sessions, so it gave me a break, uh, especially <laughs> when you know, you all were great about telling me to move up, get up and move around when I needed to. So just, I can't express how much I appreciated knowing you were there and knowing that uh, I had your help. So thank you very, very much. Stitchy friends are the best. Oh, they're just awesome. So thank you. Um, the other thing as a huge thank you that I want to say to each and every one of you is I have reached 6,000 subscribers. It just that blows my mind. I am so grateful to all of you for, you know, again, hanging out, for hitting subscribe, for being there with me uh, and for me at times. And I just, it's just, it's, I don't have words for it, but I just, beyond just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you all are so special, as I've said, and I just appreciate you being here. And if you haven't hit subscribe and you'd like to, go for it. You don't, yeah, you don't have to, you know, obviously. It's nice if you do, but you do, you do what's comfortable for you. You know, in the end, that's, that, uh, that's what's most important to me, that you feel good about what you're doing. Okay, so I have, <laughs> this is probably like the sixth or seventh time I've started my video. I keep just mumbling and bumbling about in my words because... There's so many thank yous and gratitude I wanted to express that I just kept messing it up. <laughs> so we're just going to have this awkward segue and just go right into my stitching at this point, because otherwise we'll never get this video done. Um, I have two starts and I have no finishes. I looked through what I have for stitching and finishes might be a little bit short on the, uh, on the agenda at this point because I just don't have a lot that's close to a finish. A couple of smalls that maybe in a couple months, but not quite yet. So we'll see. I am, if you are new, because I have, I haven't really introduced myself in a while. Uh, my name is Laura and I live in Rehoboth Beach, Delaware. Uh, I am married and uh, Mo, you'll hear me talk about him quite a bit. He works from home remotely. So um, he's here. <laughs> quite all the time, but that's okay. He's busy. Obviously he works. He works very hard and, um, he is a huge fan of pickleball. So you'll hear me talk about that and Aston Villa FC, which yay, we'll talk about that as the week, uh, in, in life as well. I have two children. Um, Megan is 23 out of college and in the working world. And Connor is 21 and is in their senior year of college. So, uh, that's just a little bit about me. I'm originally from Connecticut, spent almost my entire life there. Two years ago, we moved full time down here to Delaware. So that's that's me in a little nutshell. Maybe we'll do a stitch with me one of these days again and we can just chat. 
Uh, and if there's questions and whatever, and you want to know more or whatever, maybe we'll do something like that along the ways. All right, but stitching, let's do stitching. You know, I am obsessed, <laughs> obsessed with Yellow Submarine from Blackbird Designs. I've always liked this pattern and then you'll see people stitch it and you're like, oh, I really want to stitch it. Now, I went brighter, you know, with the fabric. And because of that, I've had to do quite a bit of changing of colors. Some are very similar to what the original is, just what works on my fabric. And then some, I had to kind of change the color scheme because they just weren't working on the fabric. So we have a submarine emerging. Yay. So this is 18 count dive in from Be Stitch Me. It is, it's bright. It is that bright, but I really wanted to um, kind of evoke that brightness. If you're new, I am a huge fan of blue. I wear blue almost all the time. Um, no, not all the time, but uh, I have a lot of blue clothes. I have a lot of blue fabrics. I just love blue. I, I love, I shouldn't say it's my favorite because it's tough to pick favorites, but it is one that I gravitate to. Now, I also wanted to take, not only is the fact that I love blue, I wanted to take the some of the original cover art from Yellow Submarine. Uh, now, I'm Googling, and so I'm trusting whatever images I found. That may not be the exact originals, but that's what I can find. So that was part of why I wanted to go with a brighter blue. Uh, if you look, if I if, the, if you look at the pictures that I found for Yellow Submarine, you know there's it's just color in your face, color everywhere, and so I am going to bring in a little bit of purple, I think, in a few of the flowers or something, just because there is one of one of them is wearing like a purple suit jacket and so on and so forth. And I just wanted to kind of brighten things up and just make it kind of pop, kind of in the way that I'm seeing on the, uh, the Beatles cover art. So I have changed pretty much everything. I've used a couple of variegated flosses. I am dipping my toe in there. And basically what I'm doing is I'm, I'm looking at like uh, most of the time and not always. I'm, I would love to also colors that I would love. I'll pick from bigger companies, but more smaller independent companies. I just pick colors I like, and then I put them in where I can with, or I've been starting to put them in where I can with my uh, patterns. So there is a combination of DMC in here. There is some variegated flosses. At some point when I have it all figured out, uh, if you would like to know any of the changes I made, I'll, I, so far my, my notes are a mess, but I do want to transfer that to my, my notebook that has all of my uh, stitching projects just so that I have an idea from my rep own reference point. But that's where I am right now. Uh, I heavily, I'm trying to think if I did anything but the submarine. I heavily worked on the submarine. There's three main colors, this color, this color, and this color. Yeah. In person, you this color right here is here, and that's different than this. And I don't know if that's picking up a lot on the camera, but in, in real life it does. And then there's kind of more of a brownish right here. So I did make a d change on that as well. But I wanted to get all of the submarine colors in so I knew whether or not it was going to work. And it will. So you can see with the original, it's very true to the original's colors. Maybe a bit yellower in a couple of instances, but for the most part, very true. So um, I just had to find what worked against this blue. What works on this darker fabric is not necessarily going to work here. So that's a, <laughs> part of my color changes when I make color changes is just purely out of necessity because if I don't, the colors won't show on the fabrics I choose. <laughs> uh, there are a couple stitch alongs for this. There's the hashtag fab for fun Sal and hashtag BBD magical mystery tour Sal. Uh, if you look in the description box below the video, I always list the, the projects that I've talked about and where they're from. And I also try to list stitch alongs. Sometimes you have to scroll. So I'll have the projects and then sometimes I do the stitch along information below, so on and so forth. But it is always there. Um, Fab for Fun Sal will be Stephanie 
from Cross Stitch the Globe and Julie from Julie and Stitches 16, I believe. And then uh, BBD Magical Stitch Along is Sarah from Sarah Stitchy Spot and Peg, who is on Instagram. And I believe I've got her Instagram as well listed down below so you can see everybody's info. So if you want to join along, Fab for Fun is Any Beetles. BBD Magical uh, is the Blackbird, part of the Blackbird. I think there's six of the Beatles series, any of those. So feel free to join along. <laughs> it's not my stitch along and here I am telling you to feel free to join along, but they were always very welcoming. So I feel comfortable saying, come and join. <laughs> Alrighty, what's next? Okay, next I need to show you a picture. Um, if you are new, digital patterns, I don't do like editing kind of thing. Um, I'm just not that sophisticated when it comes to technology. And honestly, I just like doing it this way. And it gives me, I have a file folder of all of the current projects that I'm working on in of pictures. And so this way it's easy to pick them on up. All right, what am I stitching? Okay, let me show you the full set first. I pulled out my November gnome. Yay, I haven't, I haven't stitched on him and I don't even know this year if he's had much stitching. Um, this is a set of three you can get from I want to say now you get it at Wonder Stitch UA. I originally bought them from Wonderland Ukraine, which is still on Etsy, but this style of gnome, they transferred to Wonder Stitch UA. Now, the, you get the set of three. I am stitching, if I go this way and I make it bigger, this is the one I'm stitching right now. What I am not doing on any of the gnomes, because I still have, I have three gnomes going. I have one finished and I have three others. I'm not stitching that background. I just choose a fabric color that mimics that and I just go from there which eliminates a lot of stitching plus it's just I, I don't know if I need it especially if I, I have all these uh, hand dyed fabrics I might as well use them so that's what it looks like I have to say these gnomes that it's all DMC it's incredible how they've gotten the DMC colors mixed to such a degree that there's so much almost 3d effect to whatever you're stitching. In this case, it's like the leaves and the flower. Um, 18 count buttercream from To Die For Fabrics. And I was just as I was, I had to look up what this fabric was because I, again, I haven't stitched on him probably all year. And I looked at my notes from my whip parade in January. And my goal was <laughs> to get the left, the left side of him done by the end of the year. Well, that means I have to pick him up, right? So maybe in September, I'll focus on him. He's he's full coverage, and I usually do a full coverage focus. So maybe that would get me some good progress on him. I mean, there's still a decent amount of stitching, and we have a lot of beard. And the, like the leaves, the, this area has probably five different DMCs. So, of course, you know, there's a lot of kind of... Um, changing and finagling it but it will look fantastic when it's done and then there's a pumpkin over here on this side which again would have multiple colors but I, maybe I'll leave that for October because well if I get that far because we have my pumpkin birthday stitch along in October so we'll see but it was fun to pull him back out again I really do enjoy these gnomes I am not it's funny because people sometimes are either gnome people or not right I am not particularly like I don't have gnomes all over the place. I never really collected them, but there was just something about these at the charting and how they looked. And now I like gnomes. I don't have any garden gnomes. I don't really have, well, except for the flowers that Mo keeps alive because I am, flowers cry when they see me coming because I am just <laughs> not very good at keeping them. That's about all we have in our front garden. I don't think we have, sometimes we'll do like a Christmas thing, you know, at Christmas time but anyway I digress but yeah so I have the November gnome the winter gnome and the St. Patrick's gnome still going and I have several of these and I mean all of those sets have three whether or not I oh, I know I'm never going to do all three I mean that's a lot of stitching and gnome stitching they'll all eventually just go in a collection in my scrapbook so that'll be so much fun uh, for the different seasons and the different looks of them so Anyway, I pulled out next. There's no particular order on this. Some of these were done in the Zoom weekend. I did finish up the Olympics. Um, 
the of the last three days it was friday saturday sunday from last week two of the days was one specific stitch that i haven't shown you yet and then i don't remember the other one but um it was fun i enjoyed the the olympic stitching and then now it was kind of like well after that what do i pick so i just started picking some fun things I started this at the beginning of spring. It is Carolyn's Balloon Spring from Jan Hicks Creates. And it just needed some work. Autumn and winter are done. Spring and summer are started. And I I don't know if I'll go between the two or maybe when I wanna pull out one of these, I might pull out spring until it's done and then pull out summer until it's done. We'll see. Uh, this is 18 count car wash from Fortnite Fabrics. Now to die for fabrics is on sabbatical, not dying this year. And I don't know if they'll ever die again. Fortnite Fabrics, uh, I don't believe is in business anymore, but I do mention them just because maybe on a D stash, you may find something. And so, you know, I do still mention, uh, if I have an unknown, I will let you know when it's unknown. This, uh, and the part of it was the autumn was stitched in this color fabric as well. And then what winter and summer are being stitched on is the same color fabric and they will be four part collection in the scrapbook. So that's where I am. I did, a well, I wanted to get in a, another green here. So I just did a little bit of that, but then I focused all on this kind of balloon. So I, I flipped over, I flipped it over and I was stitching down kind of thing just to to start getting this is a big as you can see it's the big center balloon and uh, fairly intricate in the counting so as you can see I got some of that done and then I said you know what I want to do the crown in the middle so I did that as well these are there's quite a bit of stitching on these they're deceptively lots of stitching but they are a lot of fun uh, I had done autumn and winter and then I was ballooned out because they are repetitive right I mean and a lot of times collections are that's the whole point that ties them together you know you'll have the different balloons and then the, the seasonal town at the bottom but they really are cute when they're finished and if you are not sure what um when i say putting them in my stitching scrapbook if you are new um, a lot of my stitches kind of like this one right here um is scrap they're scrapbooked and i have as a longtime paper crafter i decided that for me unless they're too big, bigger than say 12 by 12, or unless I want some other way to display them, they're gonna go in the scrapbook. And it is just a nice memory and everything is nice and compact for future generations as well. Um, if so, if they'd like to keep my stitching, it's all in one little scrapbook. So when I have collections, I put them together in the scrapbook. So it's kind of like, think of it as like an art collection or whatever kind of thing. And so this will be a lot of fun because you'll have the four seasons illustrated in the scrapbook when it's all done. So that's where that one is. I, this reminds me a lot of Nantucket Sky. It's a little bit more variegated. Nantucket Sky is from Fabrics by Stephanie, but um, that's kind of along the same lines. So if you were looking for an available fabric, Nantucket Sky might be an option for you. I think Stephanie has another one that might be a little bit darker than Nantucket. I don't think I've ever tried it yet. So I would I would recommend her um, website and you can see if you want something that's kind of got that cloud look. Uh, Nantucket Sky is a favorite of mine and you'll see it in just a little bit. Um, if you want Fabrics by Stephanie's uh, link, if you go down to the very end of the description box, I have a list of I think five links of some of my favorite fabric dyers. I buy from other places as well and other types. Those just happen to be the first, say, five I look at when I'm looking for some fabric. All right, so Silver Creek Samplers is next, and this is called Moonshine, and this is a new start. My friend Mandy, hi Mandy, from Mandy Parker, if you'd like to watch her floss tube, had stitched this last year, and it looked so fabulous that, and I'm gonna write down Mandy's name so I remember to link her. All right, um, that I said I had to stitch it as well. And it doesn't look like much yet, but I swear there's a good, there's a good chunk of stitching. Um, this 
I was curious about some of the grays, but this is the corner and edge of the moon, so it's going to be fine. The words are in some grays, but actually, honestly, that would be fine if some of the words are in that. You'll be able to see it. This is a fabulous piece of fabric. I love this fabric. This is 18 count devoted Dobbin from Those Missing Stitches. And, oh, I just love it. It is, it's one of those, what color, Laura? Is it blue or is it gray? Depends on the light. I think Lynn might have described it uh, from Those Missing Stitches as maybe a denim. I think, I can't remember. It's been a while since I watched her latest floss tube, but um, it's just a fabulous color, an 18 count. I've always bought, I might have, actually no, I think I have one or two 20 counts from her as well. But for the most part, I have 18 count. All right, that's what I've got. So I started with the little kind of, I'm, I'm distracted. We are in the flight path of all of the, the large fighter jets and it's really loud. <laughs> so I can hear it in the background there. So that distracted me for a minute. So we have the sand dollar, right? Isn't that what that is up here? And then I decided, because th th this is no joke now, the counting. Once I get it going and then count off of everything, but I did attempt to do that, I think during Zoom, which I think I then said, no, I'm not gonna do it anymore. I did do like a couple of these colors inside the moon, kind of like little, crater kind of uh, pieces just to kind of finish up stitching on this I think I got when I start I try to give it you know a couple hundred whatever hi Sandy Sandy is so funny in this stitching with Sandy that she has to do I think what is it Sandy 200 for her to consider to start in her pile and so now I'm influenced by Sandy she's in my head <laughs> but um I did get a couple hundreds on this one to start and I am enjoying it. It is definitely though a non, until I get, and maybe I get the outline border and the pieces, but it is a non zoom stitch. The words would be fine, but this part is definitely going to be concentrating stitching. So um, I will, I will have to do that when I am kind of concentrating on my own, which is, which is fine. I get a lot of alone stitching time, so that'll work. Alrighty. What's next? This next one, so I alluded to the fact when I talked about November Gnome about I do a full coverage focus each month. And so I pick one of my 16-ish full coverage starts and I then for the month stitch about 100 stitches a day on it just to get it moving along. Now this is mini Peridot, so I thought how perfect this would be um, to stitch in August. I originally started this because Megan is a August birth, uh, August baby. So she just turned 23 uh, this past week. She doesn't watch, but I'll just say happy birthday, Megan. Uh, poor thing, just before her birthday caught COVID. And we talked to her on Tuesday. She attempted to work on Monday. <laughs> she worked, it, it, her off, her, where she works said she could work from home all week long because they don't want her in the office, right? And she has a job where she can work remotely. So she said on Monday, she had the computer on the bedside table and she literally didn't get out of bed. She just worked and she didn't feel great, but she did it. And then Tuesday morning, she's like, I need a day off. So she called in sick and slept off, slept most of her birthday. But when we talked to her that night, she was feeling a little bit better. So um, I've been checking in on her and so I haven't texted her yet today. So hopefully she is back to her bubbly self. But anyway, uh, Peridot, August, the whole bit. So I thought, well, this one's a good choice. To focus on and that one it's this whole area is hugely confetti heavy hugely confetti heavy so I am I'm struggling a little bit but I have been doing my hundred a day it feels like I'm not getting much in because I'm not really doing huge blocks of color uh, or 10 by 10 I suppose if it's a hundred but I just keep telling myself I am filling in confetti uh, all the way down. This is all confetti. And then it comes over here. This will be all confetti. One day I said, I need some more of this. And I did do a, a hundred stitches one of these days in this block just to get a bit more. Uh, this is 18 count white Ada, two strands over one full cross, which is what I do my full coverages on for now. I do want to try 20. And I'd also love to give 25 a count, a, count a try. I just haven't done that yet. 
I am a fan of two strands. Yes, I do two strands and 18 count. I like the full coverage. I know it's not for everybody. I know a lot of people like one strand. That's the beauty, right? I mean, we can all use this, that same 18, 36, whatever, and do it differently and get the look that we all love. So, um, but I do, I do enjoy two strand stitching, which is why I think I just haven't made the jump to the 20 or 25 for full coverage. Smaller pieces, it's fine, but full coverage is a commitment. So 25, I think I'd like to do a small piece first to see if I can do it. And then I would try to jump to a full coverage. Okay, next. So this is part of a collection that I am currently stitching and it is part of the My Garden Journal collection from Cottage Garden Samplings. It's an older um, series. This is, I have to pick up my glasses to say 2013. So um, 11 years old at this point. There is one for every month and I like it because it doesn't say the month, but you, you know, it kind of gives you themes from the month. And this is August. Will this get done by the end of August? No, I suspect my 2025 finishes, well, maybe November or December, because I think I started in November. They may get done this year, but I'm anticipating most of these will be 2025 finishes. I'd like them to be, which means next year I have to make them focus pieces each month. So that's where August stands right now. This is 18 count what is this? Amber Waves from Atomic Ranch. I thought it would be fun because it's it's got kind of that sandish, sandy color. And so for an August piece, I wanted to do something that was kind of along those lines. I have not done I, I have not done any of them in the called for or anything really similar to the called for, to be honest with you. I've I've kind of stepped out of my own box for those fabrics. And this time around, I thought when I picked it up, I thought for sure I was going to do some more words. But then I decided that I wanted to cap off all the edges. So this whole corner needed to get done. I needed to get the pail and the shovel done uh, with that. And I think that's it. This this is very light. It's white. White doesn't show up really well on this, but that's just a little border. And even underneath here, it doesn't really matter. So I, I'm fine with that. That's the only white in the pattern except for what's covered by the water. So um, I did change this out to be just one color instead of the two uh, because I just liked it better that way. And so now I'm going to at least pick it up at least once more this month, whether or not I go back to the words or if I try to focus on some flower, I'm not sure. I'm enjoying getting all of the leaves done. I was working on some of that along with the border. Uh, as you can see, I started and I did like that. So I'm not sure which way I wanna go yet. It depends. So yeah, not a 2024 finish, hopefully a 2025 finish. And then hopefully they're all done and I can do a 12 part collection on that one. I'm looking forward to that. Those are definitely getting scrapbooked. Okay, so this next piece, I have to talk a little bit lower because Mo is working downstairs and I don't know if he can actually hear the words I say, right? I mean, he knows I'm talking because he can, you know, he can hear that, but um, what the words are, I'm not really sure. So as most of you know, Mo is a huge Aston Villa FC fan. Uh, and so we are going to be married 25 years in September. I, time flies is all I'm going to say right there. <laughs> um, and so we don't do really big extravagant gifts pretty much for anything. Birthdays, Christmas, what anniversaries, you know, we just, we go out to dinner, we spend time together. And then we generally, you know, for birthdays, like my birthday, I'll buy my own gifts and I'll say, thank you. You were very generous. And he buys his own gifts and says, huh, you did a great job, Laura. So, um, but I wanted to do something little and whether or not it's going to get done is, is anybody's guess now. I'm going to show this from the back because I don't have a cover sheet on this. I had found, well, actually no, one of you had sent me a link to a website that had some um, badge stitches of some of the teams. And this one is AVFC. So that's where it is right there. I, I haven't been able to link because we share computers and I don't want a history of any of that to trying to find it again. 
because it's not on my paper. But if you if you really want to know, uh, if you go to Instagram, my Instagram stuff is down below, and ask, then I can kind of backtrack. Well, no, because I still have to do internet searches. I don't know. We'll see. This 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 site is fairly old. This badge, I guess, right? That's what my UK friends, that's what they're called, is three badges ago. So, of course, it's not the newest one. But, you know, they don't have much cross-stitch for this. So we do what we do. So that's what it looks like. This is 20 count, actually, slate from Fiber on a Whim. It's going to be cute, small and cute like a three and a half by five petite and cute uh which is fine because you know I just want a small little stitch that can go on the shelves in his work in his office at you know downstairs in work um and uh I am using sulky so I'm doing one strand of sulky uh I was able to match I feel like so there's the lion and I can't tell if it looks like one yet I was able to match the colors pretty good I do have to get pull out my white sulky out of fish and ships because I need to do a little star there and once I do that then from here up is just blue fill in I do have to finish the lion and then this comes down and then just fill in so it's not difficult it's just a matter of pulling it out and again I and I'm enjoying the sulky one stranded but I still prefer two stranded stitching so I think that's part of it but um if I have any hope of it, even just getting it finished and not fully finished by the end of September, I need to get a little move on here. So I was thinking maybe I try to do 100 stitches a day or two strands a day or something to just move this one along. I'd like it to be really close so it looks like something by the end of September, if, even if it's not finished. So we'll see. But that's that you will most likely start seeing that on a more regular basis because it really needs to get done. <laughs> you know, when I started it, I think it was May, and I was thinking to myself, well, September's so far away. And then, you know, you forget that the summer, excuse me, I need a little green tea this morning. Um, the summer just flies. And before you know it, it's over, and it'll be September, and then I'm really scrambling. All right, next. I pulled out Wings of Change from Silver Creek Samplers. And some stitchy friends and I created a stitch along. It's hashtag Butterfly Wings Sal. And I have seen this finished. And I've seen this flower converted to two shades of purple. And it, it is gorgeous. I have to say, if I hadn't started mine and had a decent chunk done before I saw the purple, I'd have been very tempted, very tempted to change it to purple. I mean, really, all you need is a light and a dark color. So, and if you wanted to change, you have light, I'm going to say medium, and then of the same shade, dark, dark is the, is the words. So you could, you could even do that, you know, on a different color scheme if you wanted to. Or you could keep the words as is and just change the flower out. But there I am. I really, I'm really trying to focus. This flower is huge, huge. And so my focus was on getting that lighter pink in and I got it all in. And then I was, I got tired of doing that part. So I said, well, let's introduce another color. So I just threw in some of the green from the, uh, Oh, the stem of the flower. And then I, I said to myself, I can't really justify doing all of that. I need to go back and finish the flower. So now I'm just doing fill in, which is pretty good because you sort of have to pay attention. But at the same time, some of it you can just fill in without looking at the pattern. So when I pull this out again, I will I will fill that in. And then I don't know if I'll go to the butterfly here or you've, you've got the caterpillar right here on there, and then, you know, the greenery comes down here. The words, hopefully, will be pretty quick. Silver Creek's words are usually very fun to stitch. So, um, you know, she's kind of got those blocky letters. This is actually, I think this is, I'm almost sure this is Silver Creek, for those of you who have not seen that before. I can't remember what it's called, but... Um, yeah, 
I'm almost sure that's Silver Creek. But anyway, I'm distracted. 18 count <laughs> Bell Bottom Blues from Hand Dyed by Rolanda. And that's what we have. So it's slow going. There's heavy blocks. You've got this. I know that I was told this is a heavy block of stitching. That's a big leaf. The butterfly will be a heavy block. Now, this is being charted. I think it's charted in um, mostly overdides. And I'm doing the DMC conversion. But I think I because I love kind of shades of burnt orange and stuff, I have a lot of those colors that I've bought as um, variegated. So I'm just going to pull one of my variegated. And where it's inside that orangey color, I will stitch with whatever I choose. Uh, for that one so you know what I'm gonna open up the zipper real quick and put that back in the bag and this was it. I don't generally show my bags um, they're all very special because they're I have one that I wanted to give away and then they're gifts and that means so much to me so using them is just is just a joy alrighty next this one has been started did I start it this month or in July? The beginning of August. It's August 16th. You'd think August was three months. I don't remember if it was beginning of August or July. Well, it doesn't really matter. This is called Hello Summer from Erin Elizabeth Designs. And the changes that I'm making are I am not going to stitch the word hello words, hello summer. And then because of that, I am scrunching it in just a little bit. So I'm going to show you because I decided I wanted to see how that would work. And I pulled the lighthouse in a little bit and it's closer to the sun than it is in this picture. And then once I have that done, because I was originally going to pull this little seagull over and then do this, but I decided I wanted to pull this first and then I'll figure out how the sand and everything else is going to go at the bottom. Now I did want your opinion. It is noticeable on here. If you notice, there's a lot of white on the lighthouse. And surprisingly, the fabric I chose, the white's not really showing that well. So I wanted your opinion if I should go to more like a 762 gray-ish white for the lighthouse. Like if I look at it quick, it looks like I haven't stitched that section. What are your thoughts on that? This is an 18 count Lotus from Bestitch Me. So it is a very, very pale lilac. So all of this was done beforehand. And so this time around, I, you know, I kind of figured out my counting, but you can see it's going to be tighter. And I'll put, I'll put a couple of seagulls. There was a, there's supposed to be a seagull, I think up here, but I'll put them more here, depending on what space I have. Cause I just wanted it a small little cute summer small instead. And basically where the letters were, both here on the sailboat and then on the lighthouses, I'm just filling in with the colors that would have been, because I mean, the lighthouse is specific colors. So that's easy enough to fix, really. But what do you think? Should I pull that white out? So I'm using, what am I using? B5200. So it's as bright as I can go for white. But can you see it? You know, I, I don't necessarily always trust my eyes, but the next section of Lighthouse is a big block of white, and I really don't want to put that time and effort in if it's hard to see it. So I really need your help on this one. <laughs> I thought once I had the two colors in, it would pop a bit more. And maybe it will, because, you know, people are going to see, they're going to expect to see something there, and then they kind of, it's not what you focus in on. So maybe it'll be all right. But once I got to here, I stopped. I said, I need, I need my friends to help me here. So I need your thoughts. But this is a, this is an enjoyable stitch. It's an easy stitch. I, um, Erin Elizabeth is an enjoyable, there, she has enjoyable stitches. I mean, now it's going to be a lot of block stitching. You know, I don't even have to worry about the words. And then once I get to the bottom, the other thing I considered here, do you see how the water is just, you know, like there's different lines that show the water and I've debated on making that full coverage and stitching it all in I haven't decided yet we'll see what it looks like I might do the lines and then figure out if I want to add something else in there so that's been fun and again it's coming along nicely 
I am not necessarily, I don't worry about seasonal stitching so much. I mean, I have, clearly I have some things up. This one is a tiny modernist and I just put this on my shelf because I have some floating shelves in here. Um, and I just, I like doing things as leaners a lot of times where basically they're just on a board and they just lean. But what I thought I would do is start pulling some of the stuff out seasonally from the scrapbook so that they get some extra added time. Um, so you get a chance to see them. And plus it also gives you a little extra look when I talk about scrapbooking stitches, what I mean. Because I know I get a lot of questions about that. Alrighty, next. Along with usually the full coverage that I'm focusing on on the month, I've been trying to pull out another one during the process and stitch about a thousand stitches on it. And then once a thousand is done, if... I can call it good if I'm really loving what's going on, I'll continue. But I try to get that thousand. So this way, at least, we're moving along and getting some stitches on them. So this one I decided to pull out. I hadn't pulled it out in a while. Uh, I started this this year. This is called Dance at Midnight. And it is charted by Sunflower Stitches. And the artwork is by Rose Khan. And Rose Khan herself has said this is a bit of fan art from Sarah J Maas, The Court of Thorn and Roses. Well, probably Dance at Midnight. Isn't there one with Midnight in the title? I can't remember now. I read them last year. Well, I had read them. I don't think I had read the entire se series. I had. I know I had read the first one and maybe the second. And then uh, there was a long stretch. There was a stretch of time. Maybe I was waiting for the other books. And so I ended up rereading the entire series last year. But um, I love this one. I love Rose Khan. I love the colors. I just really like the look of it. There's a lot of block stitching here. I mean, I'm sure when I get to her dress, I mean, look at that. There's going to be confetti. But um, at the moment, I'm in block stitching. I'm in background stitching. And that's fine. Sometimes, you know what? It was a nice, I would do 100 stitches on Peridot and I'd put it away, mini Peridot, and then I'd pull this one out, and I would do usually about 125, 130 stitches on it, and then put it away, and it, there was, you know, I mean, obviously, look at this, there are multiple colors, there's, there's 310, but then there's 939, and then over here, that's why I think, what, what's the brown, 3371, so you've got three different darker colors before you get to some of this lighter blue. And then obviously the confetti is where there's going to be little stars and stuff and everything. But I'm at the moment kind of working a lot on the big blocks. The confetti is easy enough that that'll be easy to fill in later. Uh, this is the width of, obviously, pull in three inches and that'll be the width. Uh, like I said before, 18 count white Ada, two strands over one, full cross. And... Um, yeah, I mean, it It got a thousand stitches, so I'm, I'm happy to have moved it along. It's going to be a while before I get into anything of picture versus background, but that's okay. It's almost, it's really, you know, it's kind of that palette cleanser idea. If I've got something that's really heavily, heavily confetti, this one will be a really nice alternative. Um, oh, I forgot. A huge thanks to Leanne from Small Town Stitches. Leanne rec re recommended these kind of jumbo Ziploc -y bags. Walmart, 10 of them for something like $2. And so they are great because obviously I don't, as you can see with my full coverage, I pull the colors as I go with it. And some of these colors I just put in, most of the time I put in the full strands, to be honest with you. Um... And I put multiple of some of these colors because there's thousands and thousands of stitches of like 310 where I use anchor or 939. But if you see, it fits really nicely in the bag. And even if I had more um, to Leanne, huge thank you. Leanne is, she's an expert at full coverage. She does so many awesome full coverage pieces. Uh, if you have not watched her before, and she's got such a great variety of them, I'll link her. And so when she tells me that this is helpful for what she uses, I listen. So <laughs> thanks, Leanne. Alrighty, next. This was my other start, and I started this on Friday. So you knew if you watched last week that this was coming. And actually, this is a decent Zoom piece because I've got it in Pattern Keeper. It went in nicely. Um, and honestly, it it 
just flows. So this is Mary Poppins and it is from, there's a company on Etsy called Lina Ova, L-I-N-A-O-V-A. Um, and they have, they're an Etsy shop and they do a lot of these. It might be Mary Poppins sampler. I'm not sure. There's a lot of different samplery type of things. Mary Poppins, Wizard of Oz, Dracula, uh, Anna Green Gables, Little Mermaid, Wizard of Oz. There is one. I don't know if I mentioned them. Anyway, so you get the point. Um, and they're just intricate and beautiful. Now, Am I stitching this entire piece? No. Some of them, I think Anna Green Gables, I may stitch the border border because it's beautiful. But I shouldn't say that. They're all beautiful. But it kind of goes with it. I haven't decided yet. Um, Cinderella, it's a little bit less wide and it's cute roses. So that one I might stitch when I get to it at some point. This thing is huge, this border. And it is beautiful and intricate and amazing. But I decided instead, I can go from each side. You're still going to see up and down. But I decided just to do the very inner. And it's a cute little just up and down border-ish thing. And then you'll have all the sections. I have not crossed that all off in Pattern Keeper yet. Uh, so I, I don't know. I mean, I didn't like prep it ahead of time and, and cross it all off so I knew how much I saved. Because that's going to save... I don't know if it'll save 50%, but it's going to save quite a bit of my stitching uh, time and effort uh, to not stitch it. So this one will come along better. This one got a good start. I stitched on this Friday, obviously for the start. And I think every once in a while on the weekend, I might have pulled it out. And then Monday, which is hashtag monochromatic Monday. So on Mondays, I am going to stitch something monochromatic because you know I have several pieces. And a huge shout out and thank you because I had forgotten it was Monday to Nancy, um, the disorderly stitcher. Nancy has a new video out, by the way. I haven't, I'm, I'm behind, but I can't wait to watch uh, Nancy's video. Um, but she had said something about monochromatic Monday <laughs> and I thought, oh boy, it's Monday. So I pulled out and I did some more of this. So this one got about six or 700 stitches since you saw it, since the start. So that's what it is, what it looks like. And it's just so lovely. I'm doing it in, what am I doing? 939. And I just, I leaned into the fabric. This is a fabric of the month from Under the Sea Fabrics for this year, 2024. And it's called Uranus. Now, for Fabric of the Months for Under the Sea, the year she puts them out, she does not sell them. And then at the end of the year, she usually does some sort of, I'm not exactly sure how she does it, whether she puts them up for sale and she sees what she gets for sales and the popular ones get put into the regular line. I mean, look at how beautiful this is. This is 18 count. How gorgeous would this be, you know, for something oceany or like if you had a mermaid, I think that'd be beautiful or any kind of thing. Um, with Mary Poppins, I showed you last week what that small Mary Poppins piece was and done on. And it was kind of that kind of bluish with some kind of gray tones to it. And so when I saw this and I got it in, does it say what month it was? No, it doesn't. It was maybe June. I don't remember exactly. It was recent. Uh, and that was kind of on my radar. I said, oh, I think I'd love to do Mary Poppins on this. I would definitely buy more of this fabric if she makes it available. In fact, you know, after I had, I was thinking about it this weekend, Yellow Submarine would look really good on this. Really, really good. But I've already started that, so <laughs> I'm not restarting it. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking I might, so you know that I finished Black Vintage Sampler this year, last month, right? And that was part of my four piece rotation where once a week I take one of my big pieces and stitch 500 stitches on it and then rotate it in and out. Well, now that I've finished that, I need a fourth one in again. So I might put this one in at least I'm going to play around with it. And for now I'll put this one in. So this, it would be up for work this coming week. So you'll probably see this again next week and I'll see how that goes because it'd be nice. You know, if once a month, it gets 500 stitches, then that moves it all at least, right? Then that moves it along. The piece that got 500 stitches this week is my last piece that I stitched uh, that I'm going to show you, obviously. 
these are not in any particular order of how I stitched them. When I was doing the Olympics, showing you that last week, that was in a particular order day by day for that part of it, but this isn't. Um, Summer Quaker by Leela Studio. For those of you who are new, there is a huge snafu for me on this border corner right here. It doesn't line up. And I kind of put it in timeout. It, I skipped a rotation on it because I was just frustrated. I did everything that the chart said and looked. And I um, I know I was sent some helpful, oh, did you check this was listed as an error? Um, and I'm sh pretty sure I have all of those listed. And I don't know, but in the picture, this is one over than what the chart shows. And I'm pretty sure I fixed that top part, so I don't know. Uh, maybe that is. Maybe I did it wrong, and that's where it is. So this is it in its entirety, so you can see what it looks like. And this is 18 Count Nantucket Sky, where I talked about earlier, from Fabrics by Stephanie. I love using Nantucket Sky when I want something that kind of is an outdoor sort of scene -ish sort of thing. And... Um, I think there's a few things I need to fill in in this side. I think, actually, yeah, like this little crab needs his legs and so on and so forth. But for the most part, that side is done. What I am not doing in the center is I'm not going to stitch the clouds because I love this fabric. It kind of has that like kind of cloudy look to it. So I did, when I stitched the sun, I extended the sun a little bit. So, because in, in the stitch piece, you know, the, the cloud would go a little bit towards the sun. It's mostly sunny. It's a mostly sunny day in the summer Quaker world, but there is some clouds right there. Um, so I did fix that and I, I, you know, I got that. There are different things that I fixed. Um, the, the letters of like the N's and the H's and so on and so forth, uh, were up and down on the pattern itself. So I made them all equal. The other change I made you haven't seen it all yet, but in the in the pattern, it goes S-U-M and then it goes M-R-E, like the letters are juxtaposed. So I'm fixing that. So you can see here, I've, I'm have i going to do S-U-M-M-E-R. I know some people are not stitching the, the letters at all. So I did change out. I had the E stitched when I realized that that had been a mistake. So I pulled that out and did the R. So those are just some of the mistakes, but... This right here doesn't line up. So I've left it be, I've got, a, I've got a hanging string on the back, to be honest with you. And so I stitched down here. I figured if I bring this across, and I'm really hoping, because I think everything is right here. And then everything, I think this bottom is right. And everything I've counted off of each other is off of the different motifs. So I'm almost sure this is at the proper section. So you you know, I did that little piece right there. All of these, these big motifs, they're gorgeous. They're huge, hundreds of stitches. You know, got a little bit of this in. Next to this, now underneath this is a, is a the lobster. So what I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to do that and come over and then, do you see how this corner comes up? I want to start that from there, work my way up, and then I'll finagle this. I feel like that's the most, the least important thing to worry about lining up. Obviously, this has got to line up with everything else. So that, to me, is the most important part. And get that stitched, and then I can just kind of, nobody's going to necessarily notice this little corner when you have a full piece to look at. And if you're looking that close that you can see it might be a little bit messed up, then you're too close to my picture. <laughs> this is clearly not going to be scrapbooked. So um, I, I have spring and summer going. I, oh, the butterfly keeps, oh, oh, he keeps flying into the big window here. <laughs> I hope he's okay. Um, I've, I would like to do Autumn. I've seen her show Sneak Peaks of Winter. So in, in I'd love to do them all. Uh, if you haven't noticed, she did release new words for Autumn because I know so many of us were not fans of those words. And I think I saw her post. And she was kind of like, I'm tired of explaining what the words are. So here's another version if you prefer that version. <laughs> and you can make your choice or rechart something that you really like. Anyway, um, 
that's where that is. It did come out of timeout because I, I, I said to myself, if I don't do it and figure it out and just plug along and what I might do, <coughs> excuse me, is when I get to this section, I'll count everything. I mean, off of each other because these motifs would have come off of here. So I'm pretty sure all of this is right. Maybe I should have come down this way. I don't know. But um, I will count everything before I stitch it and see how it lines up and then see what I have to do. Um, I still like this pattern quite a bit, but I'm a little bit discouraged and disheartened. Um, and once I get the outer edges done, I mean the center... I am changing out the mermaid. I think I'm going to do possibly a sea turtle or something else. When I get to it, I'll let you know. I mean, the inside's fine um, in the sense of I should be able to do that without a problem. I'm just a bit discouraged that I've spent all this time. And if I don't get that other last section lined up, it's all going to look skewed. So we'll get there and it'll be all right in the end. But I needed to kind of get over that disappointment that I had to really, you know, spend a lot of time figuring out. I still can't figure out exactly where it went wrong, but that might be I stitched the pattern just fine and it's the pattern that's wrong. So we will see. There's no way I'm pulling out a whole side at this point and everything else is off of it. So um, we'll just, we'll make do. Alrighty, plans. I don't have anything specific. This weekend is Whip Frenzy from Whip Warriors. And uh, I do, Whip Frenzy is probably one of my favorite. I love when they do, they call it riff off and it's a part of, it's a, it's a form of Whip Frenzy. They're not doing that this month. But Whip Frenzy is basically stitch between 100 to 200 stitches in a project and then move on to try to get as many projects touched. I might do my own variation of it, of hitting at least 200 before I move on to something else. I've realized that I am a huge fail at taking pictures. So I love Whip Warriors games, but I am abysmal at taking the pictures. So I'm going to do my very best, best to do the pictures because, you know, it's one of those groups that if you don't participate and show, you get kicked out of their rules. You know, um, that's how they do it. Uh, so I have no, I have no good or bad thoughts about that. That's just the way it is. Um, and I absolutely enjoy doing it, but I'm not sure I'd do it next year just because I am just, the picture part of it is just something I, I don't necessarily enjoy. I don't take pictures of my stuff as I go along for just posterity reasons. Um, I mean, if I really wanted to see it, I'd just look at a video. <laughs> um, so as much as I really, really like what they do, I am not good at the administrative part of their games. And so of course, um, that wouldn't work. <laughs> so I might, I mean, they do tell you what the games are. If you follow um, Shady Trees Stitcher, I'll link Lisa down below. Um, and she does talk about the different prompts and she helps people figure out maybe, you know, different like categories, different words you can think of and stuff. And so you can obviously see if you like to participate. And that's great if you want to practice the picture taking. So I'll be able to see some of it and I'll be playing along in spirit. I just won't be an official member, I think, next year. But that's next year. Maybe all of a sudden I'll become a, a fabulous picture taker and I'll keep joining. Anyway, so plans. Maybe I'll start that piece. Maybe I won't. I'm still looking at the new stuff that, you know, is coming out for market and I'm sure I'll be enabled from there as well. Alrighty. Happy Mail. I got a lovely, lovely piece of Happy Mail, and I want to send a huge thank you to Yvonne. And I'm sorry if I've said your name wrong. That's how I know to say it, but um, you. I had such a lovely, lovely package, and look at this. Look at what she sent. You know me and my summer stitching. This beautiful background there. I love, love, love this. And as soon now as I've shown it, I can put one of my summer pieces in it. I think the hardest part is figuring out which summer piece might go in it. I'm not sure. Thank you so much for sending this. And then she sent a few little goodies inside as well. Uh, this is a piece of 18 count dying for cross stitch. Uh, Kathy, who does still put her stuff out. Um, she had started a piece on it and realized that her eyes were not great 
18 count wasn't great for her eyes so she sent it to me because she knows how much I love 18 count so thank you for that and some cute little floss drops so and they are cute little gnomes that say good luck and have little plaid and different they're like St. Patrick's gnomes how perfect is that and then some cute little needle minders oh whoops we've got oh they're strong we have a cute little bat oh they are strong. We have a cute little bat. They're they're basically like kind of a covered um, fabric-y button, which is beautiful. Cute little reindeer. So we have Halloween and we have Christmas. Oh, they just attach to each other. And St. Patrick's with this cute little mouse. Right? Yeah. And he's holding a little shamrock. Which, you know, anything that has a shamrock on it reminds me of my chamois. All right. Thank you so much for this just lovely little happy piece of mail. Uh, you really made my day. Thank you. And I am so excited to put my project, one of my projects in there. And I will think of you every time I stitch on it. So that was my happy mail. Um, shopping. I went to, I very often miss on the Stitch Me. She puts out, I don't know if it's every month, but she'll put out some ready to ship fabrics. And if you know Bestitch Me, I love Brandy's fabrics. Love, love, love them. Have lots of them. I'm in her Fabric of the Month Club. But if you want to custom make a piece, you better be ready. You better plan ahead because it's about a 12-week wait. So when Brandy puts on Ready to Ship, I am all over it to see. And so I found two that I picked up. One is called Periwinkle. They're both 18 count. Isn't that pretty? I'm sure at this point the I mean, sometimes you can go and maybe your count in a color you like might be available, but they go pretty quick. But I thought that was really pretty. You know, I love purple. I thought that would be fun for some items. And then, of course, this I have to get. It's morning fog. Anything that's blue with a hint of gray is just, the you know, like a warm, not a warm, a cool gray. Um, but anything that skews blue I love and this this I would find so many things I would really like to stitch on so I picked those two pieces up from her ready to ship so that's always fun I'm her Friday night fight night I'm either asleep at 10 or just kind of winding down and I just miss it I mean people are very fast with their knees 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 and so once in a while I get something but unless I'm up on a zoom I don't remember about it to be honest with you and then I did get in my it's called, it's Autumn. Autumn 2024 Cross Stitch, just Cross Stitch Magazine, excuse me. So that just came in the mail as well. So I, I have done a kind of quick look through. You know I will do a flip through of this. Probably, I'll make my notes probably this weekend. I'll really study things and look at what, what I think. Because you know my flip throughs are a little bit different. Um, and then hopefully maybe I'll film it the beginning of the week next week and you can see what's in there and see if there's stuff that you're interested in. I have thoughts. I have thoughts. Alrighty. Um, so that was my shopping, uh, giveaway. Okay. So last week's giveaway, I asked you to say the word harvest for this autumn harvest from, Oh, look at that silver Creek samplers. It's a silver Creek week. I saw, I follow her on um, Instagram and I think she was at, was it the grace notes? Grace Notes Retreat, Grace Notes Fabrics Retreat. I think that was this weekend. I'm not sure when North Meets South Retreat. Was that the same weekend? I don't know. I was seeing pictures for, from a bunch of different retreats. And I know I saw Silver Creek, like she was doing like on the road. And then I saw her saying, okay, they're heading back home. Um, what am I looking at? Oh, I need to know my winner. Um, that's what I need. I need the other folder. So, yeah. So, anyway, Silver Creek, she was on the road this week. Anyway, the winner is Elizabeth Wright, right, with a W, W-R-I-G-H-T, 7260. So, Elizabeth, congratulations. If you could send me your address, please, that would be fantastic. All right, and this week. So, I was like, well, I've hit a subscriber milestone. Six of something gets to be a little big, right? So, I thought, well, why don't I do three $20 gifts gift cards to one, two, three stitch, one, two, three, you know, you can, it's definitely even for international. I think those shipping prices are flat rate and they have pretty much whatever you might be looking for. So I'm going to do three 
$20 gift cards to 123 Stitch. If you please, in your comment, and this is for Mo, even though he doesn't know I'm doing this, say the word Villa, V-I-L-L-A. We are fingers crossed for a heck of a season this year. So I am going to give a little nod to Aston Villa and ask you to say the word Villa in your comments. And then I will choose three winners for next video uh, who will win $20 gift cards to 123 Stitch. All right, that's the stitching. That's all I got. So if you don't care about life stuff, that's then I am so happy you're still here. <laughs> and I will see you next time. So life. Life was a Zoom mostly. Uh, we did Friday night. We did three stitching sessions on Saturday and then two on Sunday. And like I said, the wonderful stitchy friends who helped me out made a world of difference. You all were so cute. Uh, I think in every single stitch stitching session, somebody reminded me that I had to get up and move around. And as I say that, I'm going to do my, I'm going to scooch back just a little bit here so that I can do, there's something I can do in sitting for my hips that, um, physical therapist wants me doing when I'm sitting for a long time. And since I've been sitting for an hour, I am doing my exercise too. I promise. Um, so thank you all <laughs> who very gently and kindly would say, Laura, get up. <laughs> Didn't quite say it like that. I would have laughed if you had, but thank you so much for caring about <laughs> that as well. <laughs> and some of you then would get up and move with me. So that was fantastic. We could just make it a game, right? Um, so that was a lot of fun. What was funny was when I told Mo about this weekend, I said, I'm going to, you know, and I told him, I remember when I did a couple months ago that I think, does that work? You know, do we have anything going on? And he was like, no, I think it should be fine. So he had found out about somebody talking about there is a place for pickleball play down in Bethany Beach, which is really Southern Delaware, almost before Maryland. And um, so he looked the place up. And they actually, they run Nike sports pickleball camps for adults. And wouldn't you know, there was a sports camp last weekend, same weekend I was doing the Zoom weekend. So we were like, well, that was meant to be, right? So he signed up for the sports camp and there was sessions on Friday, on Saturday and on Sunday. So it was perfect. Okay, sometimes he was gone and I wasn't on Zoom and he was home and I was on Zoom, but we were kind of just, you know, chilling and enjoying our own kind of activities last weekend and it just worked out perfectly he had a fantastic time there was what did he say I think there was about 16 or so campers I think 16 or 20 at the most I'm not sure maybe but but there was an instructor for every five campers so yeah maybe there was 20 people because I think there was four instructors he said they were fantastic they knew what they were doing you know learned did a lot of kind of drill stuff and then play you know pickleball play and helping and, and games that that would help you know get better at certain skills so it was totally worth it um and there is a place down in Bethany if you're ever if you are a pickleball person and you uh I think you can just go and pay whatever for the day and play if you don't have courts that you can, if you're on vacation and you wanted to do some pickleball, it's an option for you. He said the place was really nice and um, it really was fantastic. So it worked out perfectly that we both had a fabulous weekend with our, you know, we have things that we like to do together, but we also have our own kind of things that we enjoy to do. And it was so nice to be able to both kind of tap into that and just have a great weekend. So that was that. And then I haven't done a thing this week. Um, <laughs> I didn't jump on any Zooms, uh, this week. It, it, during the week, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. It kind of depends on what's going on for dinner. We've been, this week, we've been eating dinner way later than we normally do. Like, I am a, I don't know about the rest of you, but if I could eat dinner between 5 and 5.30, I am, I'm golden. I like to get done early, have everything kind of digested before I go to bed and all that kind of stuff and so on and so forth. But whether we're just starting later or things are more intensive to do, we've been eating way later. And so that kind of pushes my night back and stuff. So um, it's been a quiet week otherwise. Uh, but um, I did want to talk about a book. I went to, I talked to you about in my neighborhood, there is a mystery book club. So once a month, they, they have a book, everybody reads it. And then at the beginning of the month, there's a meeting uh, in the clubhouse and 
whoever wants to come can come and we talk about it right in the neighborhood. So sometimes I'm able, sometimes I kind of get in the groove and sometimes I don't. And sometimes I'm kind of like in the mood for reading and then sometimes I'm not. So I think I'm really going to enjoy this one. I read the first couple chapters, so I wanted to show it in case you wanted to. We talked about last month's and again, I'm not sure what I feel about it. And again, if you ever want to talk about it, let me know. But this month, and I have the book because I just got it and I was able to get the large print from the library, uh, which I love large print. Um, it is called, it's from James Patterson and that's the co-writer and it's called Holmes, Marple and Poe. And it takes place in New York City and you have three investigators, their last names being Holmes, Marple and Poe. And, um, you know, they're private investigators. And I don't know where the story is kind of going from there. Uh, like I said, I read the first couple chapters because I picked it up yesterday um, just to kind of get a feel for it. And it was easy reading so far. Um, and I'm interested. It, it, it caught me enough that I think I should be able to read this without any problem before the beginning of September. So if you would like to read this and chat about it with me uh, after we're all finished, you could certainly do that. Or if you just want a book recommendation, I know somebody I think it put in the comments last week that they read it and I thought they, I think they said they thought it was pretty good. So um, that's what it looks like. I figured I would show you in case you're interested. And after I read it, I'll give you my thoughts as well. Um, I'm trying to listen to a book. I'm really not good at books on tape. I prefer reading them, to be honest with you. And I'm, I couldn't go finish all of it. So I'm going to try getting the book from the library and reading it. And then I'll decide whether or not I like it or if it was just the audio version or if the book more than 100% for me. We'll see. So that might be something in the future to talk about too. All right. I'm looking at my table. I'm looking at my notes. I think that's it. Uh... I don't even know if we have any really fun plans this weekend. <sighs> Who knows? You know, I got to get my house ready. My in-laws are coming at the end of next week. So uh, I think there's some cleaning in my future. <laughs> I noticed my refrigerator needs a little work. And we didn't, it was not long ago that we cleaned it. But you know how it just kind of, I don't know, things spill in there and you don't always catch it all. So I think I'm doing a, a deep refrigerator clean this weekend, if nothing else. So anyway then I do definitely have to get some stitching done because I need to, I need some fun after doing that kind of stuff. That's about it. I, um, still doing my exercises. Again, I have to learn not to be frustrated because after breaking my toe, it kind of threw everything in a whack. And so my hip and my back are not going to get the same progress. So I'm just going to keep doing my exercises. And like I said, the physical therapist gave me some for after sitting for long periods of time or while sitting for long periods of time. So I've been doing pretty good about that. You'll be proud of me. I don't always remember, but I do remember several times a day. So I'm pretty proud of myself on that. All right, that's it. I'm just rambling. So I hope you have a fabulous weekend, whatever you happen to be doing. I hope you're well. I hope you're safe. Um, I hope you're not getting sick like my little Maggie. Um, but uh <laughs> Hopefully she's feeling better. I'll find out tonight. Um, but yeah, take care of yourself. And remember, please, 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 you are important. And what brings you joy is important to do because you need to make sure you feel good about yourself. And uh, you're enough. You are enough. And what you enjoy doing is just the most important thing. All right. Anyway, until next time, happy stitching.